Hello, welcome to Anthony's TV. My name is Jack Tetsbury, that's the Maltese Falcon. And today I have with me... Nick Georgiev. From... Antelopodio. My man, thanks so much hey. for being here. We're gonna do a video, am I right, about how to record vocals. Yeah. So if you're a beginner, this is gonna be aimed at you. We're gonna go right from the very beginning. So if you think, no, I know how to do it, don't watch this video. Or if you wanna see what we end up talking about, look at the chapter markers and skip ahead because we're going to be going through some key concepts. Uh, let's get into the video. Before we start, can I know a little bit about you? We had a little chat, but I deliberately stayed upstairs. Yeah. What brings you to Antelope and brings you right here, just so you know that you're being taught because there's going to be a lot of information in here by a guy that knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Well, the reason why I work for Antelope Audio is actually because I'm a Bulgarian and the headquarters of Antelope Audio are in Bulgaria. Brilliant, that's it. Done. And now we're moving. No, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's how it all began, yeah. basically. Uh, no, so I, I've been here in the UK. I live here for 14 years already and I came here to study music production. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for the past 14 years and it was basically an accident that, that I started working for Antelope. They just sh saw me talking at, a, at an event. I was delivering a lecture and they said, They heard Whoa. the accident. Oh, what? No, it was actually in Bulgaria. All right, cool. It's just a free event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he's super passionate. We've already seen some, hopefully we can show them some videos of uh, your passion for recording. I'm right? very passionate about recording. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, well, we, you could say that I've got a lot of experience recording in, in studios, um, primarily here in the UK, but actually my biggest passion is going on location and going to some really crazy places. Check and this little <laughs> clip out. I'm going to get Chris to put it in right now of what you're up to. Where, what's this clip going to be of? Oh, that's, that was recorded in Snowdonia uh, just, just last spring and it, it's, it's in a stone quarry. I actually spend a lot of time on Google looking for all kinds <laughs> of weird places. Right, so you're going to get some yeah. information from a passionate dude. Let's see that clip. Right, I'm the beginner, which I am, and I want to record vocals. Where do you see that starting? What are the kind of key fundamentals of recording a vocal for you? Right, well, it starts always with the singer and the song, yeah? So the most important thing is to consider the voice, whether it's a female or a male voice, like mm -hmm. if it's a loud voice or it's a quiet voice, consider the song and actually record it in a way that is suitable for the mix. That's my always, you know, my primary concern. So all the choices that I make during vocal recording are actually guided by that idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, where do we start or what do we need? Well, we, we're going to need some basic gear, obviously. Uh, so all antelope. Well, no. doesn't have <laughs> hey, to be. Just to say, say, what's cool is, they've been brave enough to come in. We want to do this series of videos addressing these very core cool subjects. So if you like this, let us know in the comments as well. But you've got, um, what's amazing is you sell the right gear at Antelope for this very thing. So we're going to learn about the equipment as well. We're shocked. Give us a break. Of course, but also actually all the things that we're going to talk about, they're not going to be, you can do them with any other brands of microphones, headphones, interfaces, whatever. Good point. That, that works in the same way. So Yeah, like you said, so the gear, let's go run through what we need. So what do we need for vocals? Well, obviously we're going to need a mic, yeah? Uh, most typically, this is going to be a condenser mic. There are other types of mics, but that is the most typical choice, I would say, at least for studio recording. Uh, then, of course, you're going to need a stand. And if your mic doesn't come with a pop shield, uh, which is this little thing in front, that is, you know, something that you must have, uh, you know, that pro basically stops blasts of air. You know, they have a lot of energy from actually distorting, you know, the sound of the mic and, you know, you just, you just want to stop that. And, you know, uh, pop shoot, mic, stand, a cable, obviously an XLR cable, and then you're going to need an interface in a computer. Obviously, the interface will have to have a mic input. And the better quality is, the better it will sound. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. And headphones, yeah, headphones are very important. I'd say closed back headphones is what you need because they're obviously open back and closed back headphones. Open back are good for mixing, 
for recording something like that, you want to have closed back headphones, which means the sound from the headphones will not come out, and therefore it won't bleed into the mic and into the recording. Yeah, that's one thing that you need to pay attention. Real talk. Yeah, yeah. Essential stuff, pop shield, you can't get around a pop shield and a good pair of headphones. It's, well, well, maybe you can show the difference with and without a pop shield. Oh, nice. I'll do my best Great. sting impression. Fields of Varley. <laughs> Listen to that song. There's a guy that he's so scared of saying the B that he says a V. So. And, and actually, that's a production trick. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, cool. So we've got the gear. What do you want to do next? Shall we try it? Yeah, I'm so go? sorry. Oh, okay. I'm going to do some singing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for what's about to happen. But uh, we're going to, and uh, maybe, yeah, I'll do it. Wipe my headphones on and we're going to record a bit of singing. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. Anything to do? I, I'm a guy, I've never been in front of a mic before. Right, so I would say you, you want to have the mic at the height of your mouth. Like, theoretically, it could be a little bit lower if you want a little bit to capture a bit more of the chest sound. Right, yeah. It's going to sound a little bit bassier. Mm -hmm. But a good way to start is at the height of your mouth. And then it's also really important how far you are from the mic. So if you're far away, you're going to get a lot of the room sound. And if you're, the room where you're recording is not treated, that's going to be a bad thing. Yeah, this is like here. Yeah. So maybe I can demonstrate that. Like, I got sunshine and I got sunshine. Now, hopefully, maybe he's gone to the effort of game matching them because one was louder. But I heard the tone change. The tone changes as well. So that's two things that are going to change uh, depending on the distance from the mic, yeah? If you're very close to the mic, you're gonna get more bass, yeah? And you're gonna get less of the room and more of the voice. Mm -hmm. If you're further away, you're gonna get less bass and you're gonna get more of the room, actually. So, you know what? If your room sounds all right, you could record some backing vocals, for example, from a little bit further away, mm -hmm. just to help them sit a little bit further back in the mix. See, this is one of the things I was talking about when I said that actually the purpose of what you're recording in the mix is what decides the way you record it. Nice, I yeah. like that philosophy. So I'm there, it's a good distance away, I'm going to sing a bit of uh, that dodgy song, right? Yeah. Yeah, cool, we go. I got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I got the month of May. That was actually nice. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Didn't do any lit. <laughs> thanks, <mate. laughs> Emo. Right, so we got that voice bit in there. And say I go, oh, yeah, I like that. And maybe it was in time and here. That's production stuff. But recording-wise, we've got it in. Um, uh, Level-wise, was there something? And how do we of set the course. levels? What you need to do is one of the most important things, actually, I'd say probably the most important thing when you record anything is to set your mic gain correctly. Because if it's too low, you're going to end up with a weak signal that could potentially also be noisy. Mm -hmm. And if it's too loud, it's going to start distorting, you know, if you add too much gain. So the best way to do this, if you're recording a whole song, find the loudest spot in the song, yeah? Mm -hmm. And once you've decided from what distance you're going to sing, then you sing the loudest part of the song and you set the mic pre-gain according to that. So maybe we can show that very quickly here. So the mic pre-gain on, you know, the device that I'm currently using, which is a Zengo. You see, um, the gain is set on the device, not in the DAW. Correct. Right. Okay. And that is one of its purposes. Yeah. So it's very, it's boosting very that level faint up. sound and cool. it just needs to be amplified. Literally, there is an amplifier inside. Uh, for every mic input, yeah, yeah cool. absolutely. And do you, yeah, so we're going to do that now. What, do you shoot for a certain number? Or are you that type yes. of guy? Yes, uh, well, look, so th there's different philosophies here, but I'd say it's very, very basic. Like, you should not see the red light, you know, it, sh it should not clip. And then I'd say if you leave, like, maybe 6 to 10 dB uh, before the clipping On the point, loudest bit, yeah. On the loudest bit. Then you're safe, you know. If that's there, then everything else will naturally fall in, in its place, you know. Mm -hmm. So always start with the loudest part of the, sec of the song. Leave at least 6 dB of headroom, uh, you know. Maybe we can, we can demonstrate yeah, that. Yeah, i do yeah. the same thing, yeah. So listen, right now I'm intentionally going to crank this up. And so you can see how nasty it will sound when it distorts. I'll drive it controlled. 
Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you got that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was enough, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> now, um, so, essentially, if you go to the louder section, I'm just going to turn this down until I just don't see any red lights here. I got sunshine on a cloudy day. Right, so that's, that's just that's perfect. It. Like, I was looking right here at the clipping indicator, and, you know, that's like the minus 10. We were just a little bit above that. You know, and you set that on the device, we're good to go. You can always check back in Logic. You can see basically here where we clipped and it's obvious, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what you want to avoid. And here's this good healthy signal. So we got that take in there and we set the volume. You said about maybe different voices. Do you consider the mic choice, because this has got some special technology in it, Right. Oh, yes, it does. Now you've heard my voice, my sultry tones. Is this a good time to think about mic selection or do you want to move on to processing? Absolutely. So this kind of microphone, which is a modeling mic, you know, what it can do is it can, it can sound very clean without any modeling, but you can also apply the modeling to it and make it behave like other microphones. And you can do that either on, on the way in while you're recording it, or you can do it afterwards in the mix, right? So I could actually take that recording that you just did there and I can loop it and I can change the mic model until I like it. I did not know that. Could we see that? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. So I didn't know you could do it posthumously. <laughs> we can absolutely yeah, do it. The Falcon's that. nodding because he's big into this technology. I'm like a bit of a Luddite. This is quite new, relatively new right in the world of recording to be able to just change. Absolutely. So generally speaking, like we, we emulate a lot of things, right? We have guitar amp emulations, outboard gear, EQs, compressors, yeah. all that stuff there, reverbs, what not really, yeah? Uh, the thing is actually microphones are very difficult to model uh, because they're very difficult basically to measure, to extract this, the character in a clean way. It's very difficult. I'm not going to go geeky here, but you know, we go to these really complicated, like, have you heard of an echoic chamber? Do you know what that is? Is that where it's really dead, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like a room where you've got 15 meters of absorption on every wall, so there's no echo reverb there. You walk in and it's super quiet, completely dead. There's no acoustics. It sounds like you're in space, you know. It's, Is it really weird? I've never been oh, on one. Oh, man, it's so weird, honestly. I'm, I, I'm <laughs> surprised because I've, I've never used them. We've only, I've only recently become accustomed to it. I love some of the technologies. Anyway, so this can do that. Let's get some examples of you flicking through those mics, yeah? Let's do it, so we're probably gonna to jump to that. Right, so the way this works is, so I've recorded the unprocessed sound here, yeah. and I've got the plugin, and actually, I can just basically just flip through the mics here. Can you know, we do I that just, whilst listening to the vocal? Absolutely, let's wow. do that. Sorry, mate, that, yeah, it seems magic to me. I got sunshine. So that's the sound of the deal without any relations. Mm -hmm. When it's cold outside, yeah, and I got the we can quite drastically change it. For instance, this is going to sound a lot smoother. I got sunshine. Dark wow. yeah. on a and that's modeling a completely different technology of mic, isn't it? It's yeah, it's a completely different technology. It's it's this it is a ribbon mic. What we have there is a condenser wow. mic. I can change it to dynamic. I mic. got sunshine. On a cloudy day, potentially like a posh. When it's cold outside, I got the month. Wow! Of May. Wow! And one thing that you can notice actually is some mics, for instance, will have more sibilance than others. So that one, that one should be brighter, for instance. Yeah. Then let's say if we go for like a 67 emulation. So if you've and got a choice of microphones. You they all sound wildly different and you've got to make a choice on what you like the sound of. And if you've got a posh mic like this, uh -huh. flick through the models. Yeah. Because we've recorded it and that's, that's like the first port of call for tonal shaping, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That's like changing the mic and there's lots of benefits in that. I mean, you'll see if I have to change that mic to try a different model on you, it's going to take me a few minutes to take it off the stand. Mm -hmm. You know, put the cable, change the gain, because the gain will be different depending on the mic. Every mic needs a different amount of gain. So that's some five minutes. That's you a know. really good point. Now imagine if you're recording drums and you have to change your overheads. Well, that's 20 minutes at least, you know. Yeah. So actually that saves a lot of time. And it's, and it's really cool. Because also, imagine that you're mixing this song and you're not quite sure what kind of mic you want. 
right? But also, what I really like, like one of the best actually techniques when you mix is contrast, right? Mm -hmm. Like think about the, the drop in the club, you know, what, what, what do they do? They stop the music before the drop comes, so there's an even bigger contrast, mm -hmm. right? So actually you can use that to create contrast. You can have your verses recorded with one type of mic, but the chorus with another, or the BVs with another, the wow. middleweight with another, and you can create different colors that way. And wow, mix technology. can really, you know, benefit from that actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we got it in, we've chosen the mic, if we've got a choice, we've set the levels correctly, we've done our job, right? I'd say in terms of recording, basic recording, that is it really. Pick the right mic, put it at the right height, choose the distance, set the gain, Mm -hmm. Off you go. Yeah, that's the simple part of it. Now, if you wanted to make it more like a professional recording, you could start adding processing and there's other things you can do with it. Right, vocals in there. Let's do some processing, right? Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's address this processing bit then. Can we start doing it? And can we do it on the vocal that I recorded? Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, all right. Let's do this. So, the first thing is, like, you may not be hearing this, but there's buses around us, there's tube where we live, you know, there's all kinds of sources around us that create rumble, like noise in the recording, that it's way down at the lowest frequencies, where the bass is, yeah? Um, and the thing is that human hearing is not sensitive to this. You may not be able to hear that, but that's there in the recording. So if you're going to process that vocal in any way, you want to get rid of that rubbish before you can process the vocal. That is absolutely 100% the case. It doesn't matter whether you're committing to the effects and you're recording with the effects or you're just mixing your vocal. The very first thing that you're going to use is a high pass filter to just remove the rubbish at the very low end of the spectrum. So this is yeah. an essential first step. How Absolutely. do we do that? Well, let me show you. So what I have here is, if I hit play, what we're going to see, uh, we're going to hear the voice that, that you just recorded. And here on this screen, what we're going to see is a representation, a visual representation of that voice. Yeah. <laughs> so what you're going to see... Ed <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's rather beautiful, actually. I quite like the way it looks. I'm interested. I've never understood how these things work. What, yeah, you were about to say. I'm fascinated. So basically, what you're seeing here is the amount of energy at different frequencies. So you see here, I've got like 30 hertz, 100 hertz. So this is the real bass, like the low frequency stuff. Here's where the bass guitar will be the kick drum. And the but color I'm... is showing how loud that is. Exactly. Okay. So if it's a brighter color, like yellowish, orangish, wow. then it means there's a lot of energy there. And if it's darker, then it means there's no energy there. So you can actually see there's a lot of energy. Here's where you're singing. This is the pitch of your voice. You can see it going up up and then down here. But amazing yeah. how much energy and consistent it is at the bottom. I never thought of it. Exactly. That. And so you see all this stuff here, this is just We want to get rid of that. So you we want to get rid of that. So what you use is an EQ, basically just an EQ, and you just use the high pass filter element in the EQ. And I'm doing it currently here in Logic just so that you can see it, you know, uh, mm -hmm. done in something that... And they have a simplistic view of it there, but this is much clearer in uh, this inside. Oh, I can, I can absolutely do this with, uh, you know, with the antelope effects. But can you see now that when I remove that low end, can you see how that cleaned up? Good yeah. example, mate. Now, one thing you can do is you can make that steeper, yeah? Uh, mm. So the filter can be much steeper. Can you see now how much more rubbish is gone there? And you don't need this posh bit of kit to do it. You just list, use your ears. Are, are there any numbers that are kind right. of normal numbers? So I can give you a few ballparks. Yeah. Yeah. For male voice, you know, you kind of, you can go right to about 60, 70 hertz. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For female, you could easily get away with probably much higher, like 100, 150, mm -hmm. in some cases, even 200 hertz. And it can be now, a stylistic decision, it right? It can be a stylistic, and it's obviously, like you can do a lot more of that low frequency cutting in the mix. Mm -hmm. you know, but it's because... essential first step. What's the next step? Okay, so if it comes to recording, I would usually have a compressor, just because, especially with singers that are more dynamic, you know, people who actually, uh, sing, you know, quiet and loud, and what the compressor will actually do is it's going to make the louder section a bit quieter, then bring everything together up a bit. So, you know, then the difference between the quiet and the louder section is not so big, but that helps for the vocal to stay consistent in the mix, you know. 
So right. let's set that up and then we're going to tackle trying to explain compression to you. So let's do that. Right, compression. We've done that high pass filter. What are we going to do with compression and how can you tell us about it? Okay, I'm going to use the simplest compressor to start with, like something that anyone can tune, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's very easy to do it. So you've got basically two parameters that you need to think about. So what does a compressor do really, yeah? The first and most important thing when you set a compressor is to say what is loud and you want to push it down and what is it that you don't want to touch, mm -hmm. right? That's the first thing that you, that you need to set. Mm -hmm. Now, because you've made all the loud things quieter, the second thing that you need to do is just bring everything else a little bit up so it sounds equally loud to what it was before the compression. Yeah. Right, yeah. So I'm just going to hit play here. That's your voice I that we recorded. And I'm just going to put one of my compressors on here. A cloudy day and when it's cold outside, I got the month of May. So what I'll do here is I'll use that peak reduction, which just basically tells me how much am I going to reduce the loud bit. And you can see that it's already moving a little bit, but not as much. So I can just keep pushing that. And what you want to see is you want to see that needle moving to about 3, 4 dB, not more than that. You know, it has to be a very subtle thing. When if you overdo it, if you do something outside, like that, you're just I really going to smash it. So anytime you basically record with compression, I wouldn't advise uh, to compress more than like basically two, three, four dB at the most. It's okay. a very subtle thing. You're just literally just helping the voice to, to, to feel a little bit more solid. You cool. know, the singer sounds a little bit more confident with something like that. That's great. Yeah. So we cleaned out the Merc at the bottom. We've controlled the dynamic range of the vocal. Uh, is there anything else you would say that was essential probably for most people in that first vocal recording? I wouldn't say so. No, I wouldn't say so. Potentially, if they're using dynamic mics, like such as the Shure SM7B or something that's very popular, mm -hmm. uh, that may require a little bit of a boost in the air region, so in the higher frequency, just to open it up a little bit, just to make it smile a little bit. I mean, I can very quickly show you that here. Any kind of decent EQ will do it. Um, for instance, that one, you know, I could just go and say, well, you know what, I want to boost the sky in this case. It's just literally the high frequencies. Now, what do I mean by high frequencies? Uh, on voice, if you want to make a voice more airy, you know, a lot of people go for like 8, 10 kilohertz. What I suggest is that you try to boost 12, 14, 16, 20, like 40 kilohertz, like really up there, which is where the air is. So the, what that helps is to make the voice sound closer, like nicer, but without it sounding harsh, because if you go below 10 kilohertz, you're, you're risking to make it sound harsh. Mm -hmm. Great, all that great tips. Makes sense? Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much for watching the video. Uh, like I said, like and subscribe if you can, and leave a comment below. Hopefully that helps. We might do some more videos than this on the kind of bare bones tutorials at the beginning stages of recording. Thanks so much for watching, and thanks, Nick. Cheers, mate. Thank you. See you.